Hey everyone, Akansky here. In the last video, we did a basic profile service example. In this video, we're going to be adding to our project. Uh, I'm going to be adding a message part that's going to allow us to send messages across servers or to players offline. And I'm going to be doing that by using the global updates feature of profile service. So I'm going to be showing you what global updates are, how they work, and how to use them yourself. So let's get right into it. All right, for the setup for this tutorial, all I've gone ahead and added two new things, a message part to actually touch and a message part script in serve script service. Uh, I just grab the part, make a touched event, grab the player and have a three second debounce. And my data code will go here for the messaging. All right. So the first thing I want to do is use the function global update profile sync. And this is basically going to allow me to make uh, global update changes. Uh, but in order to do this, I have to have the profile store because this is a function of profile store and right now I have no way of getting profile store so I'll have to make some changes to our data manager so I'm gonna go into there and under the function we made in the last video I'm going to make a new one called get profile store and I'm just going to simply return the profile store And that is from up here, this one. All right, so I'm gonna require data manager. And get the profile store. And then use global update profile sync now if we look into the parameters of this function we'll see that we need a profile key and an update handler the profile key is just the data store key and the update handler is a function that is given the global updates object and we just tell it what to do with the global updates First thing I need to do is get the profile key. So for me, that is, uh, if we go into data manager, my profile keys are set up like so, player, and then the player.user ID. Now I'm hard coding this message part to just send messages to just one player, which is my player account. Uh, obviously we're not putting in a player name or an ID but obviously you can tell that uh, if we turn this into like a GUI we could make it where a player could put in a player ID or put in a name and then the server will get the ID from the name uh, but I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, hard code the profile key so that would be player underscore and then concatenated with my ID And you can get that from the URL of your profile. All right, so now I have the profile key. I'll go ahead and put that in. And now let's make the update handler. So I'm going to make a new function. In the parameters of it, we're going to take in a global updates object. And now we're going to do um, add global updates. All right, now that we're in the update handler of the global update profile sync call, we have three tools at our disposal, and these are all methods of the global updates uh, object. We have add, a, add active update, change active update, and clear. Uh, basically, add, edit, and clear existing updates. So I'm just going to be using add active update since that's all I need for this, and to do that, I'm just going to call it and pass in some update data, which is just going to be a table of stuff that I want to pass through. So I'm going to do that right now. Global updates, add active update, and then go ahead and make a table. I'm going to, for my first key is going to be called update type. 
it's going to let uh, the other piece of my code uh, later on know what kind of update this is. So if I want to have different types of updates, I can differentiate. Next, I'm going to have a sender, which will be the player.name. Um, next, we'll have a time that it was sent. So send time is equal to uh, OS time. And then lastly, a message to send. And I'm just going to hard code this again, again, because it's not, you know, it's just a message part just for testing the global updates. I'm not actually making a messaging service. Uh, if I wanted to make a GUI where players could uh, insert a message, then we could do that. But just making a simple example. So I'm going to hard code a message in. Message is equal to I touched the part. Okay, great. So now, whenever the player touches the, touches the message part, we'll get the player, uh, we'll get my profile key, and we'll send a global update to that profile key and make a change to the global updates um, by adding it, adding an, adding an active update, and we'll talk a little bit more about what an active update is in a bit. But basically, this is just sending the mess the update over. So that part's all done. Now we need to go over to the data manager and actually receive these updates and then handle them. All right, so now that we're in the data manager, I'm going to go ahead and scroll down to where we see the profile has been successfully loaded and put into the profiles table. And right after that has happened, upon that happening, we're going to uh, search for any active updates so when we added when we use global updates add active update we added a update to this profile and it's in a active state so uh, first i'm going to grab the global updates object and here we can grab it by grabbing it straight from the profile like so and then uh, once we when we grab global updates from the profile like that, we actually have um, some new functions that we can use. So only accessed uh, from profile at global updates, we have listen to new active update, listen to new locked update, list uh, lock active update, and clear locked update. And then there are a couple functions that are always available. And that's get active updates and get locked updates. So we're going to use all six of these. First up, we'll use get, get active updates. So I'm going to use it in a for loop. And what this does, what get active updates does is it returns a array of updates and every update is an array where the ID is update one and the data that we actually put in is update two. So update one is just a unique ID for each update and update two is the data that we put in right here. So all I need right here is update one because that's the, my ID and I want to use the function uh, lock active update right here. And what I do is I just pass in the, the update ID. So let's go ahead and lock that update. Like so. And this will take all of the active updates when our profile loads and lock them. Then what we want to do is take all the locked updates with a similar function called get locked updates. And I'm going to send these to a function called handle locked update and we'll pass in global updates and we'll pass in the update 
Okay. So now let's actually make this function. And we can make this ourselves by scrolling up and adding it right before player added. Alright, so once again, I'm going to get the ID and the data. Update one and my data. So that would be the first thing I do when I handle a locked update. And the last thing you do when you handle a locked update is you immediately clear that locked update. And we do that with the function clear locked update. and pass in the ID, of course, so it knows which update to lock, or which update to clear. So four out of the six functions we've used so far, uh, the last two are pretty important as well because we got all the active updates and we got all the locked updates um, as soon as they were made over when the profile was loaded, but we want to continue to get new active updates and new locked updates as they come in uh, after, even after the profile is loaded. So these existed um, when the profile was offline, but we need to allow it to catch and listen for those when they uh, come, even when the profile is already online. And we use that with uh, the functions listen to new active update and listen to new locked update. So let's go ahead and use those. Global updates, listen to new active update. And we just pass in a function to uh, run and it will be passed in the ID and the data as two separate, two separate arguments. And I'll just go ahead and lock it just like I did here. So global updates lock active update and pass in the ID just like we did last time. And then similar similar story for the uh, listening for new locked updates. Global updates listen to new locked update given the ID and the data. And I'm going to just do the same thing, handle locked update. But to keep it consistent with how I sent it last time, last time I sent it as a table, uh, I don't want to send the ID and data separate. I'm going to go ahead and just turn it into a table. Like so. All right, we have the system to make the updates. We have the system to handle the updates. Now it's time for the fun and easy part of actually using the data while we're handling the updates. So let's go ahead and uh, just print out the console. Uh, first of all, let's use our um, update type. If data dot update type is equal to message, then we know what we're dealing with when we're making a message here. And I'm gonna go ahead and print. You have a message from and then the, I believe it was called data.sender. Yeah, I've got update type sender. I have the actual message and I have the send time. <clears throat> so let's use all of that. Now let's go ahead and print the message, print data.message. And then, um, let's say local current time. And then I'll just go ahead and print uh, how long ago this message was made um, by doing print um, OS time minus the send time. 
and that should give me the amount of seconds since it was sent and I'll just do seconds ago there we go so it'll say you have a message from and the, the name of the player that touched the part the message which I hard-coded to just be I touched the part and OS time minus the OS time when they touched the part which will give me the amount of seconds ago um, that message was sent and yep that's about it let's go ahead and test it and see if it works all right so one more thing before we test I just gone ahead and added some prints to help us understand what's going on and when uh, I added a creating active update when we create the update um, I printed how many active updates were on load as well as locked updates and I print whenever we get a new active update or get a locked update so we'll be able to see uh, when those functions actually fire all right so now let's go test okay for the first test I'm gonna have both of my accounts on the same server and I'm just gonna have this one touch the part and I'm not on the server so I need to click on the server and it says um, we had zero uh, updates on load and zero updates zero locked updates and zero active updates then it went ahead and created a active update for when I actually touch the part and then it says got new active update so that's for me getting the active update so now it's changing that active update to locked and then once it sets it to locked we'll be able to see the message so it does take some time to go from because it has to go from creating the update it has to save that then it has to go to an active state then it has to go to a lock state and then all of that takes uh, a bit of time that's really the only downside of this but eventually we'll see you have a message from an MP terminal I touched the part and it says 52 seconds ago so it works quite well now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try this again but I'm gonna leave the game so I'm gonna close it out and on my phone I'm going to touch the part again and then two minutes later I'm going to join back and we'll see if the message uh, is there even though uh, my alternate account will be out of the game and he hit the part when I was in the game so let's go ahead and test that all right so a couple minutes have passed I'm going to go ahead and join back and let's see what happens all right I'm going to check the console and it says we have one active update on load so that means the time I loaded in and we got active updates in that for loop it, it counted one active update and that active update is now currently being changed to the lock state and we just have to once again wait for that process to happen and once it does it should print out the message and here we have it a message uh, same exact thing um, from my alternate account it says I touched the part and it came in 234 seconds ago which is a little bit less than five minutes ago so that about wraps up this tutorial if you guys thought this was interesting or uh, learned something new be sure to check out the dev forum post and the API which I'll both link in the description of this video and the it's in the other tutorial as well uh, if you guys have any questions, be sure to leave a comment or uh, ask those questions on the dev forum post. And until next time, I will see you guys later.